Let's talk about electronics for a second. I've spent a lot of time in this locker over the last 10 years installing and reinstalling and testing and innovating all of the electronic components that you see behind me. 10 years ago when we started, um, the concept of an all electric off-grid sailboat hadn't really been done. So we had a lot of innovation to do and a lot of learning to do. And building this whole system out took a lot of trial and error. I think what we've settled on works really well for our needs and we're gonna be keeping pretty much all of it. We're probably gonna rearrange things and definitely redo all this wiring behind me once that bulkhead's been replaced. But this video is not gonna be about the system on board UMA. This is gonna be about converting our truck to be off-grid, at least the living side of it. It's a diesel truck, so it's got a diesel engine, but that doesn't mean that all of our living has to come from that diesel engine. We're still planning to have all of our power come from the sun, um, so today we'll be installing a off-grid system for the truck. The knowledge base and information and technology that's out there now has made all of this type of setup so much easier and it's so much more known that it's not nearly as hard to build it out as it was when we first started. Now, to live off grid, it's pretty much plug and play. You don't need to be an electrical engineer. You don't need to know much about electrical wiring or circuitry. If you can plug your phone in and charge it, you can build an off-grid system. On a boat like this, we need a pretty large system. We've got a huge battery bank, huge inverter and charger behind me. We're pretty much running a small house, but on a truck, we don't need a system nearly this big or this complex, and we can go with a much smaller, much easier system. Uh, a whole lot of boxes have just showed up at the marina office, so I'm gonna go pick those up and drive out to the beach and uh, show you what's inside of them. That's that's it. We are we are off grid in our truck now. Yeah. We don't need to like take a battery to the boat to charge it anymore or only eat cold sushi from the grocery store because we can't heat anything up anymore. And yeah. now we can recharge our battery, the same battery that we had when we were hanging out on Kim and Sarah's camper yeah. van. Same battery. Um, it's a good size for what we need. Like yeah. you know, the boat obviously has a much larger system on it, but um, you know. The boat's a house, and this is just a truck. We need to keep our camera batteries, our drone batteries, our laptops, our, and, yeah, our, our, and our lights. Our lights charged, and, and everything. Phones. That's it. Yeah. And the fridge. Our fridge for the truck is pretty badass because yeah. not only it's a fridge, you can convert it into half fridge, half freezer, yeah. and it's proper dual zone. You can control the temperature of each zones. Yeah. And they'll actually maintain that temperature rather than just sort of like a spillover, like fake dual zone, like most fridges. And the best part is. It makes ice. That's an ice maker. So we've had this system now for a few days and we were able to test it to see, to make sure that the panels were working and the battery mm -hmm. was working and the fridge was working. And it took us a few days to figure out how to make ice because for some reason it didn't want to make the ice. It doesn't make and ice well <laughs> while you're driving down bumpy roads we found. Um, yeah. There's, but it, it does make ice when we're parked. Now we're making ice right now. That's probably why you hear it yeah, yeah. scream a little the bit more. The compressor is like cruising back there. It's making noise. So when cool. it depends on the ambient temperature of the water, but if it's like room temperature outside, like 25 to 30 degree water, uh, it takes like 20 minutes. But once it cools the water down, like the next batch of ice only takes 12 minutes, which is really awesome. Yeah. But I'm, yeah. I'm just glad that we've got solar and a battery and a refrigerator because mm -hmm. that makes life so much better because we can store food and we can eat fresh food and we can drink cold water and we can make ice. Um, and this little thing charges up in a day with our 200 watts of solar. All of our solar and electric and stuff um, isn't coming off the truck alternator. So 
That's kind of cool. We've had the conversation of whether or not we wanted to take the solar out of UMA because we know yeah. we're going to replace those solar panels as well on the boat. Yeah, yeah. And we were thinking of just taking those solar panels from UMA and installing on a truck, but they're just way too big and way too heavy to put and on the top of the roof. <laughs> old and non-functional. Like yeah. the two tiny little 100 watt panels that we have that weigh nothing on this truck are producing more electricity than the 480 watts of solar we have on UMA. Because they're so, 10 years old now. Well, they're old, but they're also maybe have a drill hole through one of the cells. Right. Maybe just like a little bit. Um, maybe it was that time that it flew off of the boat. Maybe the time it flew time. off the boat and landed upside down, maybe cracked a few cells. Yeah, it just doesn't really make sense to pull the stuff off the boat to put in here. Um, yeah. The other thing, these these um, batteries, when you plug this into AC, it charges in like 45 minutes. It's incredibly fast. It's pretty sweet. Uh, so maybe we'll is... try uh, induction cooking and uh, electric kettle and all the other fun things too, so we don't have to carry gas bottles around and switch them from country to country like we had to do on the boat. Yes, because right now we're using our tiny camp stove. Yeah, that's not very efficient. Which... Those little gas balls we have, are expensive. We can probably grab the induction cooktop from the induction. boat. Why haven't we done that yet? This, that this can, can handle the induction. It can put out 1800 watts, so we can yeah. run our induction so, off but of it. You know, I know why we it. haven't tried it yet, because we don't have a table. Mix. Oh, yeah. We don't have it. Like, th this where we're sitting is where we cook we, and we've, uh, do everything. We pulled the back panel off because <laughs> we're designing a table that we're going to put on here. Um, and, yeah, but we still don't have furniture. Imagine when it starts raining and we're underneath the awning. Uh, yeah. We'll want a table and chair. We'll um, figure out, that's the thing. We'll just figure, it figure out, out as we need them. So when we're on the mat and it starts pouring rain and every, our, all of our food is like flooding, <laughs> we'll then the maybe Catholic we'll just buy a chair. <laughs> go buy a chair. I'm glad we have electricity. Now we can keep our batteries charged. So we can keep making YouTube videos. <laughs> right? We can charge our camera batteries and stuff. Yep. Uh, and also, thanks EcoFlow for hooking us up with um, some solar and a fridge and a battery so that we can keep all of our stuff. Sure. Ooh, speaking of oh, stuff, good timing. I'll be right back, guys. It's like the fridge oh herd. They sent us out all of this stuff, um, and if you guys want 5% um, off, there'll be a discount in the description below. So if you're interested in anything they have to offer, you can get 5% off, which is pretty nice. Look at this. Oh my gotcha. god, this is luxury life right I think it's here. Got, we gotcha. we gotcha. didn't even have this on Uma, okay? You, they're, they're stuck to the bottom. Ow. You gotta like, you gotta like, Look, Kika calls them little finger. They're, they're like little finger pockets. They're so cool. Look at this. Look at, the, look at, ah, I dropped look at the all ice. that ice. I'm fired. Look at all that ice. Mm. Oh, it's so cold. We didn't have this luxury on our boat. Oh, we need water. Me. Mwah. <laughs> You're going back. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> If you guys want ice, I don't know if check, you can tell. Out, check out the link below. We're pretty excited about <laughs> ice. My, uh, my milkshake brings all the bars to the end. Ice, ice, baby. All right, stop. Now give me that ice because <laughs> I want it back. All right, guys. Really nice. Cheers. Oh, so cold. Ice, ice. <laughs> We don't have chairs yet, we're so <laughs> we're this is there. the best we have. And actually, I kind of like it. They're very comfortable. We're not doing boat work today. <laughs> um, we're out at the beach today, and it's nice and sunny and fresh. And uh, we're going to be going on an adventure today. Yes, we're going on a road trip. Yeah, so we have been... We have been living on the truck now for over two months and it's been relatively easy because we still have access to the marina so we can shower and use the bathrooms there and we're in a city so it's easy to get food. We can go to the grocery store for lunch every day. But we haven't done many proper road trips yet because 
we haven't been able to keep our camera batteries charged and our laptops charged. And uh, now with the new EcoFlow battery and solar and fridge, we can carry enough food and keep our batteries charged so that we can actually venture further away from UMA. So yeah, we're gonna go on a little bit of a road trip this weekend and uh, explore some of the coast that we've been meaning to see since we got here and we just haven't had the opportunity to go do that yet. I like the roof rack so we can strap things on top. Like our free diving gear. When we grabbed the bag <laughs> and brought it to the truck, it felt like a big bag and then we strapped it down to the roof and then it's just, it yeah. feels so small. It feels like we need more gear. There's a lot of real estate up there. <laughs> It's huge. It's, it's so like tiny. it's like a king size bed plus a bit. It's like a tiny little bag strapped onto it. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. So we've also been upgrading the truck uh, a little bit to make it more livable as as we go. We've made a couple of much needed improvements to it um, that we'll share uh, share along the way. So the other day I was uh, on the beach skipping rocks, and then then came behind me and he made a thing. He made us something that's so much better than skipping rocks. We get to launch rocks even further. He taught me how to throw rocks with a, what do you call it, a rock launcher? Oh yeah, of course, a sling. <laughs> Silly me. So we're gonna show you how we sling rocks this morning. <laughs> do you wanna give me a little rundown of what this is and how you built it? 550 cord, two arm lengths, duct tape, we can uh, launch rocks much further than you can throw them. You just have to get the timing right. The beach is just covered in like perfect, like kind of golf ball sized rocks. And then you can like blow your shoulder out launching them out in the ocean. <laughs> Kind of hard to judge distance over the water, but my guess is that that's well over a hundred meters. Think about this is that you don't need, you know, fancy toys. I wish I had this as a kid. <laughs> I had rocks, but I just threw them. <laughs> I didn't have a proper sling. Uh, but like, yeah, you just there's rocks everywhere. So. Uh, I have to warn you, I just started with this, so I'm not a professional. I would suggest not staying in my field of view. Okay. <sighs> Here we go. Is that a good rock? <laughs> it looked cool. Right. This is what, day two? This is day three, three. of throwing. Pretty good. My warm Keep up. the left arm out and then pull it in like as you come around. There you go. Nice. Okay. Moment of truth. Skip that one. All right, now we can start our day. And we're going on a road trip. All right, let's do this. are off on our road trip now and we're heading south to one of probably one of the most beautiful places in Sardinia. Uh, we'll see when we get there. We've never actually been there before. 
but first stop is we need to get some water. The cool part about Sardinia is that there's water fountains everywhere, like drinking water. It just is free everywhere, and you can just pull up in your car and fill up your jerry can and then um, have clean water. All right, we're gonna fill up our water jugs. We just stopped at the lovely water fountain and we're gonna get some water. Is this full? It's just this, right? Mm -hmm. You know it's gonna get really heavy real quick, right? No, it's fine. I got this. It's like more than full. Driving? Yep. Let's drive. I can drive for a bit. Let's drive. Let's drive. Let's drive. <laughs> we keep passing sections, uh, like burnt sections. And at first, I thought that maybe it was on purpose. Maybe the farmer was burning like old crops. But it didn't look like it was on purpose. It just looked like, like wildfires and because like the signs were burnt like some posts were burnt yeah there's been a couple of sections that have been burnt along the side of the road so far and um i thought it may have been from last year because there's still some like green growing underneath it but um this last section we just passed you could still smell the burnt charcoal so it's fresh um that's why there's campfire bands here 